Hi everyone, I'm Nils Homer. I'm founding partner at Fulcrum Genomics, a bioinformatics consultancy. I'm here to talk today about a new NF Core pipeline called FastQ Quorum that implements the FGBio best practices for UMI based uh, consensus calling. Why is it named FastQ Quorum? Well, it's uh, Paolo's idea to name it, so that's one, uh, but really it takes input fast cues and then uses a quorum of observations to squash sequencing errors for ultra accurate sequencing reads. Finding the one in a thousand difference, or maybe sometimes the one in a million difference, is really important for a diversity of applications. But obtaining that accuracy to achieve the incredible resolution that's needed is extremely difficult. But obtaining the such high accuracy has been achieved through molecular barcoding that enables squashing random error through multiple observations of a, of a single source DNA molecule. These molecular barcodes are also called unique molecular indexes, or UMIs. They are attached to each DNA uh, molecule to identify them prior to amplification, and then after amplification, those copies can be uh, used to vote on a consensus or form a quorum, if you will. There are many molecular barcoding schemes, some commercially, some in publications. Each have different properties, each different schemes, some identifying a single strand of a source molecule, some being able to identify both strands of a double-stranded or duplex molecule prior to amplification, during amplification. Some have fully degenerate or random UMIs. Some have UMIs from a fixed list, so a fixed list of barcodes. They have all different advantages and disadvantages in terms of cost, in terms of yield, and their ability to correct error. There are a number of places these molecular barcodes can be added to sequencing reads. Um, they each, each used differently to identify the source molecule. They can be attached to the sequencing primers either in the index reads, so the sample barcode reads, or the genomic or template reads themselves, so typically the R1 or R2 that we talk about. They can be added during, before, after to amplification. Um, there's even duplex sequencing adapters uh, that allow you to attach them to both strands of the source molecule, which is really important for squashing library prep errors that can occur after the, the addition of these barcodes. We developed the FGBio toolkit to be able to support these diverse uh, molecular barcoding schemes, and I'll talk a little bit about FGBio in a second. And we specify the schemes using a read structure, and I encourage you to go read um, our introduction to read structures on the FGBio wiki. So that brings us to FGBio. Like popular, uh, other popular bioinformatic toolkits like SAM tools or GATK or BED tools, FGBio is a collection of command line tools for analyzing primary genomic data. Since its conception in 2015, it's been downloaded uh, on, from Bioconda for over 3,000, over 300,000 times, mostly by us, maybe sometimes by you. Um, it's particularly relevant for the FastQ Quorum pipeline uh, because it's the tools that, that allow us to, to produce these high accuracy uh, consensus reads. So a little bit of an overview. Um, with methods inspired by, by others, um, including UMI tools, so you know, we're, we're the best at adopting other people's ideas, um, it, and it's supported by integrated DNA technologies and twin serum biosciences at its conception, we aim to develop user-friendly command line tools to manipulate these uh, read level data with UMIs. We eventually published our best practices guidelines for FGBio for consensus calling from fast cues. Hey, Geraldine, if GATK can have best practices, so can we. Um, we then began work on the FastQ Quorum NF Core Pipeline to demonstrate these best practices. It kind of languished for a little while, so I decided to come to this conference, and that made us actually do it. Um, and so the, the pipeline's organized into two phases. So the first phase is a pre-processing phase to get to grouped reads. The second one is a phase to get to uh, consensus calls from those grouped reads. So in the first phase, we do standard quality control. We uh, take the fast cues, we convert them to BAM and extract the UMIs, adding them as tags, SAM tags, to the, to the BAM file. So yeah, they're always carried along. We then align the reads to the genome, and then we use the UMIs and the, the alignments to group reads that come from the same source molecule. So all the reads that observe the same source molecule should have the same UMI and should align to the same place. With that group BAM, we can go through consensus calling. And this is the process where we're going to look across those reads and squash that error. So the first step is to consensus call the reads, then we align the reads to the genome, and then we filter the reads based on either read level or base level properties like minimum coverage, observing that source molecule or other things. There's an error in the subway diagram based on what I just said, so I hope you can spot it. This is the R&D version of, of this phase. 
Um, this allows users to test various filtering parameters, consensus calling parameters. There's a lot of different uh, assumptions in, the, in the, the probabilistic models for, for consensus calling, and so this allows them to optimize it for their assay or their use case. There's also a high throughput version where performance and throughput um, are more important or take precedence over flexibility. Um, this version calls uh, consensus and filters them at the same time, then aligns the, the reads. So this reduces the number of reads that need to be aligned, so it's a little bit faster, fewer intermediate data, which is important for I.O. Looking at the tools used in the pipeline, we have multi-QC and fast QC for, for reporting and quality control. We have uh, SAM tools using for, used for format conversion and, and sorting. There's a custom sort there called template coordinate sort of uh, that's pretty new in SAM tools that enables um, you know, a one-pass uh, sorting scheme for this. There's also uh, BWA for alignment, but then the rest of it is FGBio tools. Um, our goal with this whole F, uh, this uh, NF core pipeline is to be faithful to our best practices as well as supporting uh, the community of users um, that are out there. With uh, the help of some very, very responsive and helpful NF core maintainers, uh, volunteers, and members, Fast Quorum had its first official release last night. Um, it supports single strand and double stranded uh, sequencing data, so different molecular biocarding schemes both the R&D and high throughput FGBio best practices, combining fast queues across you know, runs or lanes, or if they're uh, split across different uh, sequencing reads, so you know, up to the you know, uh, dual index paired end runs, and, and, a, and a whole swath of other schemes as well. And before I go, I wanted to highlight the team that we built here, and you've seen a few of the faces as we continue to grow uh, and build the team at Fulcrum Genomics. We have a, a group of talented and, and experienced bioinformatics scientists and engineers we serve uh, companies across, that are developing new sequencers, assays, gene editing platforms, clinical diagnostics, therapeutics, forensics, and so much more. If you have an interesting biological problem and, and data can be uh, and given to us, we'd love to work with you. Um, so a lot of our work has involved developing open source tools, which, which allow not only one client, but many clients to, to utilize tools, and this is, in, uh, this is very true for FGBio and, NF, and the NF Core or Fast Quorum. Please come visit our booth and, and introduce yourself. I'd love to talk. And finally, I'd love to acknowledge uh, the people who contributed to um, the, the, F, the fast, uh, sorry, the FGBio toolkit, as well as the NF Core Fast Quorum. The, so that's the NF Core team, the maintainers, the volunteers, the community, as well as a bunch of our clients who support open source software, which I think is super important for all of us. Um, you know, we all have very proprietary internal tools that maybe we're a bit shameful about the way we've written it, but we really, really, we should be sharing. Uh, to, make, to make these tools freely available so we can all benefit from them. And finally, I'd love to thank Paolo for his breakneck pace developing NextFlow and his patience with this particular developer. Sorry. Thank you. I think I gave you some time back. Thanks, Niels. Yeah. So earlier today during breakfast, we were discussing about companies interacting with NF Core. I think this is a great example of a company doing this. So do you have any questions here in the, audio, in the audience? Okay, so during the break, few, okay, there. So that's something that we're working on. Um, we're working on to evaluate. I think it's really, really attractive to have. There, there are other approaches too that do um, you know, error correction on flow cell or you know, right through sequencing. And I think those are really, really attractive because it eliminates a lot of the, the bioinformatics that has to happen here. For PPM seq, you know, because it's on an Ultima, there are some challenges. I, I worked at IonTor and I know about homopolymer errors. Um, there are some challenges there that are really fun to work on. So, so you know. As technology advances, it just makes more problems for us bioinformaticians to solve. So I'm excited about that. And the high, through, high coverage of that data is going to be, is high throughput coverage is going to be really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Thanks, Niels.